This year, we cooked from a lot of vegan and plant-based cookbooks. Stick around to see what was in our top 10. We're gonna go eat dinner from this. Really? It tastes like plastic. It smells really good and it tastes even better. Are you saving dinner? No. What's not to like here? Mmm, that's good. Holy cow. Oh, f I'm sorry. Oh. Welcome or welcome back to PB with Jay. Here on the channel, we focus on plant-based goodness. I lost half my body weight from eating plant-based and you know, moved my body around a bit more and I'd like to share that information with you. Over the last year, my family and I have cooked from and reviewed 20 vegan and plant-based cookbooks. And in this video, we're gonna narrow it down to our favorite 10 of the year. Now, just to be clear, this isn't books that were necessarily released this year, although some of them were. These books are from all over the spectrum, from books that we've had in our closet for a long time, books that you've recommended, and it all started with a cookbook that we found literally on the street. This honestly was just meant to be a one-off idea to see if it would be interesting, but you responded to it so strongly that it's become a mainstay on the channel. And yes, we are gonna keep doing them, but we have got a really long list. All of you have been so awesome in sending your recommendations over the past year, and we've got a lot of our own, to the point where we've got almost 100 books on the list Maybe double that actually. Going forward, the plan is to try to do at least two books a month, but still when you do the math, that still only equals out to about 20, 24 books a year. So keep the recommendations coming, but just know that some of the books you wanna see from us might take a while to get to because we like to do other things here on the channel other than just cookbook reviews. And hopefully you enjoy some of those other things as well. In fact, stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to talk about some of the things we're going to be doing in the new year on the channel. Now, before we get to the list, if you've been enjoying these reviews and are interested in buying any of these books, it would be super awesome nice if you use the links I have in the description down below because using those links helps out the channel. And if you want to help out the channel in other ways, you can leave a tip in our tip jar down below or you could check out our merch store and buy something for yourself or a loved one. Lots of ways to support the channel. Speaking of support, I'd love to give a shout out to some of the people who have said hi to us in the comments down below. Susie from Rocky River, Ohio. Kristen from Guatemala. Cheryl from Ingleside, Texas. June from Switzerland. Patsy from Pennsylvania. Claudia from Regina, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan? Saskatchewan. I should know that because it's in my country. Hi, Claudia. Jody from New Mexico. And Samantha from Fairbury, Nebraska. No, Nebraska. I know how to say it in my head, but words are sometimes hard. Nebraska. Hi. If you want a shout out here on the channel, all you have to do is say hello in the comments down below. Let us know where you're watching from and something about this video that you enjoyed or didn't enjoy. We'll take feedback of all sorts. And also, if you enjoy this compilation of our top 10 favorite books, Maybe you should subscribe so you can see the ones we're gonna do in the new year. Or catch up on the backlog of ones you haven't seen yet. Now to our top 10. I just wanna be super, super clear that these are just our opinions. Four knuckleheads eaten plant-based in my house. That's it. If you don't agree with us, that's totally fine. Let us know in the comments below what we messed up in our order and what you think we should have had on this list or higher up lower down. This was actually really hard to narrow it down to not only our top 10, but then to put it in an order. And honestly, on any other day of the week, I might put these books in a completely different order. But what I tried to do was order them based on how the entire family felt about them and our experience as a family, not just myself or my wife individually, if you know what I mean. So first up, number 10. Hello everybody, and today I'm making meal from the Instant Pot for a whole week. Slow cooker. Slow cooker for a whole week. I'm not no, done. I'm that's not, not done. how we do it. In case that didn't make sense, I'm cooking for my family using only a book called The Vegan Slow Cooker for an entire week. Let's see what we think of it. I think I f***ed up. If my family doesn't like this, that's okay, because I'm gonna eat the whole damn thing myself. I'm very skeptical of all of these dishes. I only want the potatoes. Yeah, that tracks for you. That's really creamy and nice. I'm gonna figure out my slow cooker if it kills me. I kind of love the idea of the slow cooker because it's just throwing a bunch of in a pot 
and putting it on for a long time and going, maybe, maybe it'll work. This book comes to us from Kathy Hester. Now this book is obviously recipes for the slow cooker and I use the Instant Pot. Trust me, I got lots of flack for that down in the comments below, but that's what we have in our kitchen and I'm not gonna go out and buy a new device just for one cookbook when a device I have already does kind of sort of the same job. I know it's not the same. I get it, I'm sorry, moving on. But I think generally speaking, most of the recipes got classified as pretty good and none of them really blew our minds off. Away, minds off, away, you know what I mean. They weren't recipes that we would necessarily beg for again, but it was decent. Number nine, every meal my family eats this week is gonna be from a cookbook that one of you recommended. Cheers. Let's see how that goes. That's a banger of a soup. If my kids don't like it, I'm kicking them out of the house. So for dinner, we're gonna make this fresh falafel and tzatziki bowl. Did I say it right? Tzatziki? Tzatziki? Tzatziki. Tzatziki. This book comes to us from Ashley Madden. There was a lot of recipes in here, two soups in particular that blew our socks off. The Indian split pea soup and the Thai curry noodle soup. This book has a really solid variety of recipes from a harvest salad, to different ideas for breakfast, as well as unique spins on desserts. This is definitely a book that I would recommend taking a test run for if you're at all interested in it. Number eight. Maybe we're ready for a new book. This is, we literally just started this video. I'm gonna cook for my family for an entire week using only this cookbook. Yee. But I can, the flavors are not bad. Yeah, when you can taste them. Huh. Let's see how I can screw this up. Mmm, I like that. Oh! What does it taste like? That's disgusting. That's amazing, you guys are insane. Bland. That's really good. These are tomatoes and goodness. Can I have one? You asked for another one, that's a good sign. I always ask for another one, I have this one. This book comes from us from Carly Bedrug. I apologize if I said your name wrong, Carly, your last name anyway. I, I just, I always think I mess it up. Maybe I don't. I really love her stuff on social media and I really think this book is a beautiful, it's just a work of art how it's laid out. It's got lots of photos of not only the recipes but all the ingredients as well. And so for a beginner to this way of eating, I really highly recommend it because it simplifies things and makes it really easy to cook from. That said, it does feel a bit like a beginner book, which is probably why it's so low on our list. And also, some of the kids and sometimes us found the food a little on the blander side. That said, some of these things have found themselves into our steady rotation, especially those tahini cookies. I'm literally going to make some later today. And even though this book is ranked lower on our top 10, I am really, really looking forward to her new book coming out this spring, which I believe is called Plant You Scrappy Cooking. Number seven. This week, my family and I are only gonna eat using recipes from this cookbook. Stick around to find out what we thought about it. So good. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh, that's good. This could be a disaster. It, it tastes like This looks like the kind of soup that I will like just love and devour. Not my favorite. This is not gonna work. I would eat this twice. Surprise, surprise, I like this. Best waffle ever. She's never said best anything ever. Peace out. This book comes to us from Anne and Jane Esselton, two ridiculously awesome plant-based warrior women themselves. This is a really, really great book, but I think our family was mixed on on different recipes. Some the kids really liked, but the adults didn't love, and vice versa. And I think that's ultimately the reason why it's maybe ranked lower on this list. Don't let this dissuade you though, especially if you're not cooking for kids. The ginger cookies are something I'm literally gonna make for this holiday season. And that green goddess sauce is now part of our usual rotation of sauces. It's fantastic and you can put that on anything. It's really good. Maybe not cereal or oatmeal. Although, I mean, savory oatmeal maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna stop talking. Put that green goddess sauce on everything. Maybe not a brownie. But maybe. Also a special shout out to the falafels in this book, which might be Annie's favorite meal ever. And that's a huge deal. Really, 
awesome, solid book. Now to number six. I'm gonna cook with only this book for an entire week. Stick around and see what we think of it. Wow! Oh, this could be a giant cluster of Nope. Yeah, and then sometimes that happens. This might be one of my new favorites. Yeah, it's really good. This book comes to us from Iza Shanda Moskowitz and Terry Romero. I hope I said your names properly. I love this book so much that when we went to New York City as a family, I had to stop by Iza's restaurant in Brooklyn. It's called Modern Love. Check it out if you're ever in Brooklyn. It's really awesome. Maybe a little expensive, but worth it. There are some dishes in this book that we make on a regular basis, including that tofu florentine. And even though we don't do sides a lot, my wife is obsessed with that ginger bok choy. And their scones are super awesome too. There's like a whole section just on scones. There wasn't any recipes in here that any of us actively really disliked, but there was very few that we all really, really loved, which is why it's a little bit lower on this list. It's still an awesome book. Number five. Hello, people. So today we're going to be trying this weird dinner. Hey, I'm going to cook from this cookbook for my family for an entire week. Stick around to see what we think. Mmm. It's so gooey inside. I don't know how you do that. This could be a disaster. Like, you don't like it at all? Uh-uh. This might be my new favorite curry. Look how squishy that is. Mmm. We need to save some for dinner. Mm -mm. That might have been one of my favorite meals I've made in reviewing these cookbooks. This book comes to us from the Six Vegan Sisters. There are so many recipes in this book that we absolutely adored. We got fluffiness out of some of the baking dishes that we haven't seen in gluten-free recipes, even though we were modifying it from their original ingredients. In fact, going through this video again, it made me realize that I need to revisit some of these recipes over the holidays when cooking for family members because I think it's going to be winner winner tofu chicken dinner all over the place up in here. Some of the highlights in this book that I'm dying to revisit include the hot fudge pudding cake, the red coconut curry, and that butter tofu. Here's the thing, this book should have ranked higher on the list. The reason it doesn't is because we had to do a lot of modifications to make it whole food plant-based. So if you're just eating vegan or plant-based and not worried about the whole food health aspect, maybe this book would be number one for you. But because a lot of people on this channel are trying to eat a little bit healthier and aren't super comfortable with doing swaps, I had to rank it a little bit lower. That said, if you wanna learn more about swaps, I do have a swap video where I teach you how to do some of these things on the fly that I'll link to down below. Otherwise, this is a fantastic book filled with family-pleasing recipes. Number four, put the lime in the coconut. And it should get all up. I'm gonna cook for my family for an entire week using only this cookbook. Stick around to let me know what you think. Tofu mustard spread it is. My beautiful boy. You should try this. It's spicy. Ooh, that's good. Mm. It looks really good. It's a winner. So this was a total and utter failure. It's gross. Terrible. I love Thai food and I love tacos. And now I can have them both at the same time. Layer of flavor on layer of flavor. It's orange. How much fun is that? I really like it. Banger. Just smash it into your face. Kim Campbell's book is just packed with some brilliant recipes. And I honestly think if it wasn't for the kids disliking a few of them or not really being super into them, this would have ranked higher. But when it came to the adults in the family, this book was a real winner. Some of the highlights include a tikka masala, buffalo pot pie, but the best of all were her Thai tacos. And if you've seen one of the videos where I cooked for carnivores, you'll see me do a remix on her recipe that really went over super duper awesome good with that crab. Fantastic. And the bonus is that after many failed attempts, this is the book that taught me how to make my own yogurt. So thanks, Kim. Number three. I can't change the recipe. Is that your impression of me? Yeah. I'm gonna cook for my family for an entire week using only this cookbook. Welcome to the channel where Jeremy mostly follows the directions but changes it when it suits his family's needs. 
Stick around to see what we think of it. It's gotta be saucy. I really like it. Bad. It's not our favorite. It's so good. Mm. This is my kind of dinner. That slaps. I haven't even tried mine yet. I already know this is gonna be a recipe that we're gonna have more often. Daddy, cheers. I think this is junky vegan. There's no other flavors than spice. Basic, tasty. Yeah, this, this might end in utter failure and tears. You need to try it. Are you eating all the chocolate? No, no, I would never do that. Tony Akamoto's book was the last book we actually reviewed this year for the channel. And even when I was partway through, I knew this thing was gonna make our top 10. I think what made this book really rise to the top was that everyone liked everything we tried. Some of us love things more than others. And obviously Annie is always gonna be Annie. I want French fries. But there were no straight out fails here whatsoever. And like the book's title suggests, it is quick and easy. And despite of the few treatier things like the tater tot casserole, this book is really healthy as well. And Tony offers swaps whenever she's using things like oil or sugar, should you wanna make it healthier. So it's a great book for beginners too. Highly recommend this if you're new to eating this way and want some great, quick, easy recipes. Number two. Annie, you gonna help me make dinner? No. Okay, bye. This week, I'm gonna cook for my family using only this book. Stick around to see what we think of it. Uh, welcome to PB with Jay where I screw up all the recipes. So you don't have to. I mean the flavor's okay, but I don't like the texture. It's a really good flavor. But I think we'll be making these again. It's really good. Where are we actually now? See how it tastes. They taste awesome. Spoiler alert. I'm shocked that I like this as much as I do. What do it look like? Oh. I didn't trick you, it's just sometimes I gotta help encourage you to try new things. That's called trick. Really good. Really good. Ow, mother! Ashley Madison's recipes in this book slap almost as hard as my son's towel did at the end of that clip. Ow! And the fact that this is our second book from Ashley on this list lets you know what a rock star she is in the plant-based kitchen. Everyone loved this book. Some recipes the adults loved a little bit more than the kids, but nobody disliked anything. Really, kind of, mostly. From a miso gravy poutine, a tofu shakshuka, killer brownie made with beets, and a pancake recipe that actually made us second guess our own for a beat there. This book is a masterpiece of plant-based deliciousness and it is aptly titled. Honestly, it was hard not to put this book at the number one slot. The only reason it isn't there is because I think Wooly and I love the dishes more than the kids. The kids were enjoyable on most of them, but they didn't straight out love them all. And that brings us to our number one spot. Drum. How do you feel this taste? So good. This week, I had a cook for my family using only this cookbook. Stick around and see what we think of it. <laughs> twist, 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 twist. Mm, it's so good. You need to make this every day. Mmm, good bad. Ooh. I highly recommend this if you have kids. This is for the lazy people who don't want to make their food taste good. They just want to have food. It's really good. It's so good. It's just dancing on your mouth. It's not punching you in the face. This is tangy, zesty. Ooh, it looks good. Well, it's like spicy at the back of my throat. I've had hot stuff before. That's a weird experience. I like it. It's all right. Let's we'll see. Your hand is covering your face. Oh, hi. Welcome back to the show, Willie. Janet Grineau delivered us our favorite book of the year. This book was actually a bit of a sleeper hit for us in the house, and I underestimated it based on the title alone. When you think about quick meals, you think about things being slapped together with flavor being the last thing in mind. Now, while I would challenge the 15 minute thing in the title, I would still say that all these recipes are quick and easy, and they came together in under a half an hour. Even better, they are packed with flavor and super important, they were loved by adults and kids alike. There wasn't a single thing we made in this book that we didn't adore as a family. From quesadillas to curries and a pesto sauce that has become Annie's personal favorite, this book is a real winner and deserves the coveted number one spot. So congrats, Janet. You are our favorite of the year. 
amongst a lot of things we really, we loved you all. I hope you enjoyed this list. Feel free to argue with us down below. If you disagreed with our ranking or think that we missed some of the books from our previous videos that should have been on this list. And stay tuned because starting in January, we will have new cookbook reviews for you to enjoy. They will be coming closer to the end of the month because we've got some really fun stuff coming up at the top, including a recipe full of our favorite meals that we would serve at our own birthdays, because my birthday's in January. We've also got a review video of recipes that you sent to us. So come back to see how we rank those. And starting in the new year, I'm gonna do some compilation videos where we get to highlight some of our individual favorite recipes from all of these books. So you're gonna get a video with Annie's favorite recipes. Wooly's favorite recipes, Ify's favorite recipes, so on and so forth. So obviously you need to subscribe for all of that great content, but in the meantime, YouTube wants you to watch this video right here, especially if it's still the holidays and you're just chilling around, you're waiting for family to come over, or maybe they just left and you just, you know, you need some headspace. So, you know, put this on. I don't know, that was a 